All right. So the first thing we want to go over is let's remember what we've talked about so far. The first thing we've talked about, ladies and gentlemen, is a quadratic function. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Right? We talked about our quadratic function. Then what we talked about was the values, the values that made your quadratic function equal to 0. Right? When we said f of x, when that was equal to 0, the values of x that made that equal to 0 were what we called the what? Zeros. So the values of x that made that equal to 0 is what we called our zeros. All right? Then we started talking about the quadratic equation. And that, all that is is when we take our function, our quadratic function, and we set it equal to a value, which we're going to use 0. And then what we talked about, when we find the solutions to this, the values of x that make this solution true, all right, we call those the roots. So all the solutions to there are what we call our, so our solutions are what we call our roots. Okay? And that's what we kind of talked about so far about quadratic, quadratic functions and quadratic equations. So now what I want to kind of discuss with you is factors. So ladies and gentlemen, what we previously went over, and let me go and see. Let's go and take a quadratic. So we, let's say we have a function. We have a function f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And let's take the function f of x equals um, x squared minus 8x plus 12. OK. So what I'm going to do is we talked about factoring, right? And we just did some practice on basic factoring. Now, what exactly is factoring? Well, let's go back even to earlier numbers when we talked about them. If I said, what are the factors of 12, you guys would write 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 4 times 3, right? And you, you could go back and forth, right? You could also do the negative versions of them as well, right? Negative 12, negative 1, negative 6, negative 2, negative 4 times negative 3. We could do all those. What, why do we call these factors? Because these two numbers, when we multiply them, we get what? 12, right? So the factors is what we're going to be multiplying to get to there, to get to your original number. So when I say factor this polynomial, all right, or when I'm talking about what are the factors of this, what we're going to do is we want to write this as a product of two, as two factors. right? And that's what we practice. We practice taking a binomial and writing it as a product. So that's where this whole Philip Diamond problem came up of, came from. Because what we want to do is we want to create this as a factor problem. And I'm going to tell you why in just a second. So we have x squared minus 8x plus 12. To get this to factor it, to break it down into a set of two factors, a number, a, a polynomial multiplied by another polynomial, what we're going to do is remember you do a times c and then put the b on the bottom. Well, a in this case is 1 times 12 is 12. b is negative 8. So we look at my factors of negative 12, which in this case we probably might want to do the negatives. And we say, what are the factors of this um, of 12 that add us to give you this negative 8? And you can say, Emma, negative 6 and negative 2, right? So what we did is we write this now. I can now rewrite f of x equals x minus 6 and x minus 2. OK? So when we're talking about the factors of a quadratic, you guys are going to want to write this down. So what are the factors of a quadratic? All right. They are the polynomials that multiply Okay, so the whole point of factoring, ladies and gentlemen, is to take our quadratic or our polynomial and to break it down into a product of two factors. So if I say, hey, here are the factors, what that means is those are, those are your polynomials that when you multiply them, when you multiply those polynomials, you're going to get back your quadratic in this case, right? It also could just be your polynomial no matter what because when we learn on different when we learn of different factors, they're going to be your, qua or 
give us our multiply to give us our let's just call it our polynomial. Well, right now we're just talking about quadratics, so that's fine. But factors can also multiply to give you any polynomial. Okay? It doesn't have to be a quadratic. But we'll get to that when we get there. So factors are in the form of x minus a. Okay? So factors come of the quadratic are in the form of x minus a. Are these, now, I know these are both negative, but if you guys wrote them down, um, all you want to do is, if x minus a is your factor, so if this is your factor, huh? all factors can be written in the, as this binomial. They can be written in this form, x minus a. That's Hold on, we'll, we'll get to some problems with this. So if your factor is an x minus a, your x-intercepts of a quadratic. If x minus a is a factor, then x equals a is is an x-intercept. So that's what you guys need to understand. If we can write it as your factors, if I can write a polynomial as my factors, I can now find out what my x-intercepts are. Isn't that kind of cool? Remember we talked about previously, Dimitri, what we learned how to do? We learned how to find the y-intercept. Do you remember how to find the y-intercept? You plug 0 in for x and then solve, right? Then, and then, well, that was for the vert. But then, we so to find the y-intercept, you plug 0 in for x and you solve um, for f of x. That's how you find the y-intercept. Then we learned how to find the axis of symmetry, right? x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. Then to find the vertex, you took that value and you plugged it into your um, formula and you got the y value of your vertex. Now, here's how you find the x-intercepts. You take your polynomial and you factor it, or you write it as a uh, multiplication of factors. If once you can get your factors in this format, you can now find your x-intercepts, which is going to be x equals a. All right. So in this example, what are my two x-intercepts? I have two of them, right? And remember we talked about last class period? How many different possibilities can you have for your x-intercepts? You could have one, two, or zero, right? So there's going to be times where you're only going to have one intercept. There's going to be times where you're going to have two intercepts. And there's also going to be a possibility when you're going to have no intercepts. Yes? We'll, we'll go over examples like that in a second. So what are the x-intercepts for this function? Well, what are the intercepts? Right? Because if it's x minus a, then x equals a. The way you guys can always do it, take whatever your factor is, and then set it equal to 0. Right? Because remember, what is the x-intercept? The x-intercept is when your output value is equal to 0, right? It's on the x-axis. So you set it equal to 0, and that's why x equals a. OK? That's the basic of your factors. That's why we're doing our factoring. You guys are asking, you know, why are we doing so much factoring? Why are we factoring, factoring, factoring? The reason why we're factoring is because when we can write it as a series of factors, we can find our x-intercepts. All right? Yes? X is going to be 6. Yes. Yes. X plus what? Oh, so you're asking, Mr. McLogan, what if my problem looked like this? So therefore, if I factor that, I would have, um, this would be x minus um, 6. I'm sorry, x, no. Let's say it looked like a. Uh, this would be, um, let's do plus and plus, right? So what if it looked like this, right? Can you write this as a form of x minus a? Yes. Is it in the form of x minus a? Yes. What does a represent? 
a equals negative, negative 6. So a, is neg so a is negative 6 in this example. OK, so yes, when it's addition problem, this was kind of biased because you saw an x equals, it was already negative. But if it's plus, you do the same thing. x plus 6 equals 0, minus 6. So your x-intercept for this problem would be x equals negative 6. Just set it equal to 0 and solve, OK? All right, long enough video, 10 minutes.